You had a child in 1968? Yes, Gave yes. birth to a male child? Yes. Um, Dennis? Dennis, yes. Right, that you gave up for adoption? Yes. All right, that's what that's what this is in relation to. How long after she was located yesterday that she gave Miss India? Missing on the 18th and located on the 19th of October. Have we got any concerns for her welfare at this stage? Oh, definitely. Shows on the, on the film that uh, a bloke walks in the tunnel, goes to the wallet, throws all the papers on the ground, and it's something out of it, you can't see what it is, it's probably money, I suppose. It's 8am at the missing persons unit and the day's new cases have begun rolling in. All right, we've got around about 30 um, outstanding files this morning. Some of the dozens who've gone missing in the past 24 hours Diana, will be in imminent danger morning. if they're not found quickly. You've got a 13-year-old male who uh, didn't return home from school. And there are none at greater risk than missing teenagers. Darren, you've got a 14-year-old uh, female reported by a mother. Senior Constable Darren Connorbeer is handed a case of one runaway teenager who's well known at the morning muster. And for Sergeant Mark Samways, there's a lead in the case of Bill Roach, missing for 12 long years. We've been requested to assist with a long-term missing persons investigation up at Armadale. Mark will leave for Armadale in a matter of hours. OK, I'll leave it with you. It's the New South Wales Police Missing Persons Unit. Yes. Is she available? Yeah, hold on a second. Thank you. Fourteen-year-old Latoya is one of 100 teenagers reported missing every week. She's run away on uh, at least three other occasions now in the last sort of two months. Latoya's mum, Yasmin, a single mother of three, has been up all night waiting for her daughter to come home. She just heard that Latoya may have turned up Hi, at school Yasmin, this morning. Hi, I'm Darren Connabeer from the Missing Person Unit. This is my partner, Gary Melchore. Hi, how are you going? How are you going? Good. So, we have confirmed that Latoya is at school. Yeah, I just got a call from the school saying yep. that she was late, but they don't know whether she's at school at the moment, so... Oh, OK. Well, why wouldn't they know whether she's at school oh, at the moment? Oh, because they obviously haven't checked to see if she's in class. Oh, OK. So, yeah. So, but oh. they know she signed on this morning or something, or roll yeah, call yeah, and... Yeah, yep. All right. No worry. So we'll head over to the school and yep. see if she's there. Then how's okay. that sound? Yep. Cool. Okay. I'll just All right. close my house up. Not a problem. Thanks. Mark Samways and Sergeant Steve Jeffries are on their way to Armadale to reinvestigate the disappearance of Bill Roach. Uh, Samways is name to go to Armadale. Bill was last seen in 1993 aged 25, and he's assumed by many to be still hiding from his family and friends. Bill was heading towards an alternative lifestyle. He'd been experimenting with drugs and just kind of wanted to drop out of normal society. On the surface, I think Bill's appearance and demeanour led people to believe that Bill's just wandered off maybe even left the state and just gone set a new life up. Thankfully, new information has been received and now uh, we're viewing it as probably uh, something more serious. And all I could think about is the police ringing me up saying, look, we've got your daughter, she's at hospital, she's been raped, or mm, mm. we found that she's got drugs on her, or she's breaking and enter, or she's doing something. And this is Exactly, yeah. and honestly, it's a matter of luck. She only has to be in the wrong place at the wrong time, and that's exactly what's going to happen yeah. to her. It's right lane, mate. Yeah, right. straight down. She said it's her hormones, something going on in her head, and peer pressure. Well, maybe this <laughs> might be something that sort of brings her to attention, maybe. Mum is going absolutely spare, and I can understand why, because it's very, very frustrating when you're trying to do the best by your, your child and they just don't want to listen. While Yasmin waits for news of daughter Latoya, in Armadale, the missing persons unit joined with a local task force to search for Bill Roach. 
cases never really close and even though on the surface they appear to be simple, um, who knows what twists around the corner. Bill's parents and sister Kim have just learnt the police have uncovered disturbing evidence and witness accounts concerning Bill. We believe now, uh, as a result of our investigations, that uh, he has died as a result of foul play. Did you ever think that perhaps Bill was murdered? Well, they're, they're, type, they're the type of things that go through your head, but we always hoped that one day that he'd walk in the door. If we can have closure and then we can get on with the rest of our lives, and otherwise you're still hoping for that knock on the door or the phone call. Darren Connaby is my name. I'm from the Missing Persons in New South Wales Police. Do you want to have a seat? I'm not here to pinch you for anything. I'm not here to try and pinch you or, you know, lock you up or arrest you or get you in trouble. So, with you running away, you say it's just to go off and have a good time with your friends? Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever let Mum know, at least, that you're going somewhere? No. Because on the news, there's stories about some child either getting bashed Murdered or now you're 14, aren't you? To me, you look older than 14. You look like you could be 16 or 17. So if some idiot out there on the street thinks you're 16 or 17, he's not going to think twice about what he might do to you. I can see that you're obviously a bright girl. You're obviously a talented girl. So let's not waste it. I don't want you to tell me that you're going to turn around and become this model person. I just want you to tell me that you're at least going to sit down and think about some of the effects. Like I said, the effect you have on Mum, the possible danger you're putting yourself in, and the effect that you're having on your younger brothers. So what do you think? What are you going to do? Think about it. OK? Yeah. OK. Look after yourself, all right? I want to see your smiling face in years to come. She's saying she's having fun and everything, but you're sitting in the park and... Or you could be sitting at home watching movies, eating popcorn and having fun and camping out and stuff at the backyard and... They don't know it yet, but police will see Latoya's smiling face again sooner than they think. Bill went missing 12 years ago now, and we are searching for his remains. Um, and we're also searching for any property that may have belonged to him, or really anything, um, that could tie Bill into um, the story we've got that he actually may have died in or around that area. At the time so Bill was reported sure missing, there wasn't a lot done. Um, it could have been the case that because of his state of mind, he um, uh, decided to take his own life. Um, but there are a lot of unanswered questions for the family. Um, and, you know, the police investigation at the time um, was, um, was basic, to say the least. I can see now it is happening. Um, and I appreciate the fact that all these people are out there looking for him. And uh, I just hope that anyone listening that that new bill, if they're just the slightest little bit of information or just be, might be the piece to the jigsaw. It's, what, 11, 12 years now and it's... It just never gets any easier, let me tell you. Back at the missing persons unit, Constable Pat McEwen receives an anonymous tip-off, a lead in his search for missing father, Albert Locke. He's an 88-year-old man who... Um, went missing, numerous uh, inquiries have been, been made uh, through government instrumentalities and other, uh, other areas to try to locate Mr Locke. Um, his son Colin um, has, has not sighted him for many years, I believe in the vicinity of uh, 25 to 30 years. So Constables Rolf and McEwen set off to check out a reported sighting of Albert. Meanwhile, at Holroyd Police Station, there are now grave concerns for Latoya. How long after she was located yesterday that she gave missing again? Uh, Last no, night, only a few hours after police spoke with her at school, Latoya and her girlfriend disappeared missing again. Located, missing on the 13th. They've been out all night and haven't turned up for class. Missing on the 18th and located on the 19th of October. Have we got any concerns for her welfare at this stage? Oh, definitely. They've obviously jumped out the window and gone somewhere. Hello? 
Yeah, hi, Yasmin. Darren Connerby from the Missing Persons Unit. How are you? Uh, could be better, but yeah, yep. Any word from Latoya? I um, haven't heard anything about Latoya, but I've gotten a call from um, police. I've called the school three times today and they didn't turn up at school. I'm just wondering how many more times she's got to do it until something like really, really serious, like I'm like talking about like, she, sh I don't know, it's like a court order or something. You can't sort of hog tie them and hold them down or anything. Um, sometimes it's just the child themselves. They've got to actually see the light of day. We can't be there 24 hours a day to give them that guidance. So you've got to rely on the parents as well to reinforce it. Everything, I've tried everything. Nothing's working. I've even had her in counselling once before, so. That's why I think it's time for me to get tough, like really tough. The new information on Albert Locke has led officers to this nursing home in Sydney. We're currently looking for an old chap that we believe may actually reside here. Mm -hmm. his, uh, his name's Albert Locke, uh, possibly known as Bert. Right, we do have a gentleman with that name here. He's been here for some time. Has he? Mm -hmm. In fact, Albert has been living here just a few suburbs away from his son Colin and grandchildren for the past three years. Yeah, that was a good result. Um, he uh, does turn out to be the person who was reported missing. What are you missing persons in a Papua Kiwan speaking? Oh, hello, Colin. How are you? Um, Colin, we, um, uh, we've located your father. I was just wondering if we, uh, if we could uh, come and see you about it. You're at home today, Colin, eh? OK, look, I'll, I'll give you a ring back uh, shortly. OK, thank you. Bye. Um, you've done the rolls? Not in. OK. All right, thank you. Bye. Not in. So now I don't know what to bloody do now. Colin's moment of truth has arrived. It's a moment he's waited a lifetime for. This box is the closest connection Colin has had with his dad in 35 years. No photos, just scraps and clippings of a man he last saw as a seven-year-old boy. He took us out on a day trip and then uh, the zoo pictures, Luna Park, that sort of thing. And and then uh, something happened, and then that's the last I've seen again. Ah. Colin, is it? Yes, Pat. Oh. Go away. It's Patrick, you're on go away. Yeah, Colin, well, it doesn't mention on the phone. We, um, we've located your father. He's living in the eastern suburbs. Um, unfortunately, he doesn't wish for any family members to know his location. I don't know how you feel about that, but... Uh... Oh, that's, that's why I'm, I want to find him, so, so I, yeah. I can uh, well, have closure, that sort of... Oh, look, I, I can understand that. Yeah. I, I wish we had di different news for you. As you say, you want, um, as you say, closure, and uh, no doubt you, um, your kids would probably want to know who their grandfather was too, I guess. Yeah, they do. Yeah. I, I've sort of told him a, a bit of background about him. He was 30 when I was born and 37 when when we last saw each other. And he may have had um, family after that, yeah, after that. Since then. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, we've just got to adhere by what uh, the, 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 your dad's told us. Yeah. I'll certainly let him know that you're, you're the one that's interested. Okay. And we'll just hope it changes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, thanks. Right, well, we'll uh, be going then. All the best. Okay, thanks, Pat. Okay. He is a nice fellow, and uh, we just hope we can, we can maybe pass this on to the uh, his dad and see if he'll he may relent and uh, decide to to meet with him. So we just hope that that happens. If you're watching this, Dad, um, I I would like you to meet my wife and children and your your grandchildren. And, uh, 
No, like I told um, Senior Councilman William Kieran, I've got no malice towards you for, for what happened. And I just want, want to see you before, before it's too late. Twelve years after Bill Roach disappeared, SES volunteers, local police and divers converge on Springwood, his last home. Now, Bill's family have to confront that his home may also be his grave. Well, I don't think it really hit yet. It's just, I think it's about you know, to start to hit. You, know, you feel that he's probably gone, but you certainly hope that he's going to turn up. You expect it one day. Yeah, you never lose no. that hope. No, you never lose that never hope. Never lose no. that hope. When you talk with Yvonne and the rest of the family, you can um, almost see the pain on their face. Um, they don't know what happened to Bill. They haven't seen him since late 1993. When I talk to Yvonne, she's always talking about Bill walking through the door, and she's, she's told me numerous times she goes up to people in the street thinking it's yeah. Bill. This is a place Bill um, used to come, probably the place he talked about. It's also the place that police suspect Bill's body was disposed of, a haunting image for his mother, Yvonne. So what do you reckon? Thrown over or? Sorry? Pushed over, thrown over or? Right. Well, I don't know. <laughs> we don't know. We'll see, see what we can find in there first, I suppose. There's been a whole lot of scenarios going through and they the sort of things that you've got to live with and keep you awake of a night. Did they suffer? Did they? Was it quick and easy? Or, you know, and how and why? And, you know, sort of, you just go on and on and on. As the day wears on, Yasmin's concern for her daughter, Latoya, skyrockets. The talk amongst her friends is that she's been squatting in a derelict shack nearby. Here's the park just here. Excuse me, can you guys tell me if there's an old shack around here where these kids like this supposed to be a hangout joint? Just go straight down there. Yeah. It'll be ice arena. There'll be a little house across it. Oh, OK, then. All right, All right thanks. Mate, right, she's uh, 14 years old. She's roughly about 170 centimetres tall. She's a yep. thin build and got yep. a lot of acne around her face, lower face. Yep. Yasmin finds the house she believes Latoya has been sleeping in. Needles everywhere. I'm worried about whether she's taken drugs, having sex. Yasmin's been worried about Latoya before. Watch needles and everything. But never like this. Are you in there? Latoya! It's a parent's worst nightmare. The information we've been given that possibly Bill met the foul play and Bill was thrown in the waterhole. Ideally, we'd like to find a set of human remains. And if the bones are intact and they say, for instance, a jawbone, we may be able to backtrack and find uh, a dentist that Bill had been to and find dental work. And then we have the uh, forensic dentists who will compare the dental charts and they can give uh, specialist evidence that that, that jawbone belongs to the, the missing person's dental records. So there's all avenues we have to explore. Hello, Mark. How are you going? Mark, how are you going? Missing person's unit too. I work Thank with you. Steve. Yeah. It's relieving that it is happening, but um, it's very frustrating and a bit of uh, emotion would be anger that it should have been done a lot sooner than this. We did a whole lot of things going to the police and they're not having enough evidence and this and that and people not really listening to what we're trying to say. In this case, all along, Mum's asserted that it's out of character for her son just to disappear off the face of the earth. And hopefully, Mum will be proved right. May albeit 12 years later, but hopefully we can say to Mum, well, yes, your hunch was right and we'll get some resolution for, for the mother. 24 hours after she went missing, the toyer and her friend breeze in through the front door. Where have you been? Oh, well, I was at the station. All day at Blacktown Station. No, not all day. Where have you been? At school. 
No, you, at school. But you just went to school today, did you? Yeah. No, you didn't. We did. You know you didn't because I called the school three times today. And you didn't leave at 5.30, 6 o'clock this morning. You stomped out the window last night. Didn't you? Didn't you? Yes. So what are you lying to me for? You know how much I feel like just grabbing you at the moment and shaking the shit out of you? You know what? You two are finished. You're not hanging around each other anymore. Do you understand me? Yes. You go that way. You sit down there and you wait for the police to come and pick you up. What? I, don't, I want my clothes back. Latoya, you're on deep shit. I've had the police and everybody looking out for you today. Where, where'd you go last night? No, but we just walked around. Where? Over in Blacktown. That's it. This is stopping today. Right, do you know how many police officers have been out looking for you two girls? What was going through your head when the copper was talking to you, Latoya? Two silly runaway girls think they want to run away and have some bullcrap fun. Doing what? Come here. You're, I'm not letting you out of my sight. Have you been doing drugs or anything? No. I feel like just so much slapping you right in the mouth right now for just treating me like shit yesterday. Lying to me last night, saying you weren't going to go anywhere. Go in a room and check on you. She's gone. I had to leave the three kids in the house going down the park here looking for you. The police out again and again this morning. And all day looking for you at Quakers Hill, Blacktown, wherever they could think, everywhere that they could possibly think that you is where they're out looking for you. As police and volunteers prepare for one last sweep of the waterhole and surrounding bush, forensic detectives focus on the farm. The mystery of what happened to Bill Roach may be found in the floorboards of this old cottage. Oh, today we're looking for um, uh, evidence that, uh, of foul play, basically. We've been tasked to discover evidence of perhaps body fluids or blood. We removed uh, a certain amount of carpet and applied a number of chemical treatments. Uh, we got a couple of positive indications that there was uh, some body fluids in the residence. If remains are found, um, then obviously the process of DNA testing has to take place to establish that it is in fact the missing person. And uh, we have to make sure that the, a DNA sample is taken from a blood, rel blood maternal relative to compare the DNA. On a trail full of twists, Sergeant Samways discovers information that may be devastating to the Roach case. He learns that Bill was adopted. Yvonne is not his biological mother. There may be nothing to match the DNA and forensic material found in the cottage. When the police officers went to the school yesterday, what were you saying in your head, like, F you, go and get stuck? The police are here right now. Would you like to talk to them? All right, Victoria, yep. do you like talking to us and saying where you were? Well, what you've got to stop doing is they're running away, mate. I know they're running away. You're worrying too many people. Do you, who cares? This is the one that you like. We're running around looking for you. Mum's running around looking for you. The other family's running around looking for you. Takes a phone call. And everyone's mind is at ease. Yeah, hello. You're staying in tonight, yeah? Just staying in tonight, yeah? You're staying in tonight, yeah? No more. Okay. Steve, I feel like a beer now. <laughs> I think it's just going in one ear and out the other. It's her just saying, stuff you, I'm still not going to listen to you. She might surprise me. She might, she might be listening, but I, I really don't think she is. She hasn't listened all the other times. True to his word, Pat McEwen makes one last attempt to arrange a meeting between Colin Locke and his dad. I indicated to Colin that if he um, if he could write to his dad, I'd uh, I'd make sure he was delivered to him. And in fact, we yeah, we did that. Uh, Colin wrote a letter, and I've, I've taken it out to the nursing home. Unfortunately, again, um, Mr. Locke just uh, he didn't want to read it. He, indicate he may do so in the future, but uh, at this stage, um, he won't read it. It's the regular morning briefing okay. at the missing persons unit. Morning all. And no, today's busy. new busy cases have just arrived. It's 13 files from the last 24 hours. 
Um, Pat, you've got a 23-year-old male, um, last seen 7.30am on the... Constable Pat McEwen has been handed the case of a runaway husband, reported missing by his pregnant wife, Susanna. Yeah, I'll pull out a couple of files um, relating to long-term missing people. I, today to, will be a busy uh, one for Pat. He has his best Definitely. lead yet in the search for Michael Bell, who hopped on a train three years ago and vanished. Do you have an update of the uh, roach matter yesterday? And for a frustrated Mark Samways, more questions than answers. One lesson we learnt from the trip to Armidale and the roach matter was don't assume anything. It wasn't until we were sitting there at the police briefing that we realised that Billy Roach is actually an adopted son of Yvonne. All right, we're done. Last week, Mark picked up on the trail of Bill Roach, missing for 12 years. You couldn't help but like him. Forensic evidence now suggests that Bill may have been murdered. Blood samples were collected from his house. We're looking for evidence of foul play, basically. A match with his mother's DNA would have proved whether it was Bill's blood. A promising lead until Mark discovered that Yvonne was not Bill's biological mother. Uh, it's a blow because we're back to square one. What my role is now is to find the a biological relative of Bill Roach. Pat's request for information from Queensland Police provides him with his strongest lead yet on the whereabouts of 33-year-old Michael Bell. I decided to make further checks. In this particular case, it was uh, Queensland. They gave us information that someone very similar to Michael was resident in a halfway house in Ipswich, Queensland. So I've decided to follow through from there. So we just want to establish if it's the right Michael Bell. Um, what, uh, what date of birth do we, do we have a Michael there? I have the 11th of the 1st, 69. Has he got prominent teeth? Yes. Yeah, fa you know, fairly prominent, particularly yep. here. It could well be our man, actually. He's in the institution up there and, and hasn't had the contact, um, hasn't had the contact uh, phone number to speak to mum and sister and the rest of the relatives. We can provide that now and uh, I'm sure they'll, they'll get together. So it's, it's really good news. I'll speak to them shortly and, and inform them. So I've got the exact details for that. In his search for Bill's biological mother, Mark has only one clue left. Luckily, his adoptive mother, Yvonne, knew the hospital where Bill was born. And the hope is that Bill's birth card is still on file. The newborn screening cards are always indicate who the natural mother is, even if later on in, in life the baby is adopted out, because obviously the card's filled out at the time of the birth. Um, it, it indicates who the mother is, the name of the baby if known, the sex of the baby, the weight of the ba baby, similar just basic details just to, so they can identify that blood spot as, as belonging to a certain individual. The blood spot Mark is referring to is a sample of DNA stored yes, on every worries. Australian yep. child's birth um, card. We've got a missing persons case from someone who went missing in Armidale 12 years ago. Um, we're doing certain searches to locate um, his remains. There's no other way to put it. Uh, if we do, we'll obviously need something, a DNA sample to compare it to. So we're thinking of newborn screening cards. How long are newborn screening cards retained for? 18 years. So if this gentleman was born in 1968, then no, that's 40, almost 40 years ago, so definitely not, right? OK, so there's... It's definitely... So it's definitely government policy that after 18 years they destroy it. All right. Wonderful. Thank you very much for your help. Bye-bye. Bill Roach's card would no longer exist. It's a blow for Mark. His only hope now is to find Bill's biological mum by some other means. With Michael's new address in hand, Pat McEwen sets off to meet the Bell family. He used to go to West Haven School. Michael, who's mentally handicapped, had left his brother's care to live with his mother, Wendy. A short time later, he walked out the front door and never came back. This is the news the Bells have been waiting three years for. I ended up making a few more inquiries, you know, inquiries we'd sent away before. Mm -hmm. We sent them away again yesterday. We've got some good news for you. Oh. Found him in Queensland. 
Oh, great. <laughs> That's good, isn't it? <laughs> That's good. I'm I, happy. <laughs> I actually happy. spoke to him a while ago. Oh, good. And he's he's fine. They've, they've got him in an institution up there, but, you know, it's, it's just... But, yeah, we expected that anyway, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Have to take a photo up there. What do you think? That's him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we thought so too. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, I, I, that's I fairly close. <laughs> yeah. It's been uh, it's been a little while. Yeah, it's been a yeah, couple of years. Yeah, it has years, but two and a half years. Yeah. It doesn't seem to have aged too much. No, no, no. He's still got all his teeth in. Yeah. Yes, hello. It's uh, Pat McEwen. Did I speak to you earlier today? Yes, Pat. We're actually um, at Michael's uh, mother's place at the moment. Okay. And they'd uh, like to speak to him if it's. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Just a moment, I'll just put you on to Roseanne, our manager, just a moment. Hello. Hello. Senior Castbrook Pat McEwen from the Missing Persons Unit in yeah. Sydney. Yeah. And I, I want to speak to... To Michael. Yeah. Because I've got his family wanting to be in contact with him. Yeah, the family are here with me at the moment. Uh, he said he doesn't want to have any contact with them. He said that? Yeah, he's told me that over and over again. He doesn't want to have any contact with them. At the Bell home, the waiting continues. Then, the unexpected happens. Hello? This is me, Caroline. Hi, Michael. Yes, I'm in Queensland. I'm from Queensland. Yeah, I know you are. Yeah. Do you want to talk to Mum? Yes, please. Mum's here? Right, <coughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, we missed you. How you been going? You, you good? I've been busy all day. OK, I'll put Mum on. Yeah, on the mobile, on my mobile. Oh, you want to talk to Mum on your mobile? Yep. Okay. Bye. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> All right, Ricky, Mum on his mobile. <laughs> That's Mick. <laughs> okay. Hello? Let's talk to him. Hello, Michael. Hello, Hello Mick. Hello. I'm going to kill you, little bugger. Where you been? Huh? Where you been, you little bugger? You naughty little boy, I wait till I get out of here, I'll kick out the bum. Huh? You're right. Come back here. Yeah, no worries. I'm Talk to you. Yeah, what have you been up to? Hello? Hello? He's gone. Back at police headquarters, Mark has moved to the next phase of his 12 year search for Bill Roach. Just, just the mother's details. So, with Bill's birth card destroyed, Mark Samways' only lead mother's name. is the name of his biological Baby mother Baby. held in the hospital archives. Information that was given to me from, from Yvonne and I contacted the hospital where I believe Bill was born and now I have a name for Bill's biological mum. The hope is that she is still alive. Things that we might check are things as simple as RTA records, uh, car registrations, driver's licence, things like that, uh, electoral rolls. There's a whole myriad of, of uh, resources that we use and any one of those may, may indicate where this lady may be residing. Now back in the office, after reuniting the bills with Michael, Pat yeah, yeah. begins his next case. Yeah. Martin, a missing 23-year-old father-to-be. What nationality is your husband? Uruguayan? Uh, have you heard anything from him? With Martin missing for seven days and a growing concern for his welfare, Pat sets off to interview his pregnant wife, Susanna. He's been over here for approximately 12 months. His wife um, is 35 weeks pregnant, so obviously that's a, that's a concern. I'll certainly make further inquiries. There was no big fight before he left. He no. just left one morning when I was sleeping. I had no idea. No right. idea. Let's see That's in there. That's in there. When did you first meet? Um, probably about six months before I got married. He told me that he came about, oh, about nearly six, seven months before that um, with a, a Latin band. He's got good, good English? No. No. He could probably just ask for a hamburger at Hungry Jack's or something. Oh, right. That's so how basic it is. Right. 
At the missing persons unit, there is still no sign of Bill Roach, but Mark and his team have found his biological mother who lives in country New South Wales. A policeman in a tiny little town in the Hunter Valley made a few inquiries on my behalf yesterday, and I now have a phone number for Bill's biological mum, so I'm going to make contact with her today and speak to her and collect a DNA sample, so it's, it's worked out well. The only other thing I can think of is we've had this guy staying, uh, who's my dad's um, brother-in-law's nephew, who's come from Spain and stayed a few days with us here. I just don't know whether he's gone around telling everyone that I've had an affair with him or he's my boyfriend or I don't know what he's gone around telling people, but the way they speak to me and the way they've come across with me, it's like I'm the bad person, I've done something extremely wrong to him and that's he's got his good reasons for leaving. I mean, if someone's stupid enough to think of, I'm going to do that at my state, you know, I'm nearly going to give birth in two or three weeks. Yeah. So. Look, it, it could well be the case that he's he's a bit worried. You know, he's he's only reasonably young, mm. and the fact that he's going to become a dad shortly. Yeah, let's hope yeah. that's that's the case. Oh, yeah. well, so do I. But I also hope that if something has happened to him, someone will let me know. Hello, Hello. Hello. is Michael there? Yeah, I'll just get it for you. Thank, Thank you. you. Hello, Mick. How are you? We, dro we dropped out. What? We, we, the phone dropped, dropped out. out. Yeah, no, I'm not on charge. How long you been in Queensland for? She's a lot of Oh, man. We've been looking Before for you. You yeah, come and see me what? Yes, we will. Yeah? Yes, we are. Yeah, when are you coming up? We don't know yet. Nah. Soon. We'll yeah. ring you again right tomorrow. Yeah. We love you. Okay, right, we love you. We love you, Mick. Better go okay. kick in the bum. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Mick. Bye. 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 Love you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to contact uh, Margaret, his natural mum, to get a DNA sample. Um, the local police where she lives in the country spoke to one of her relatives last night. She's actually down in Sydney this weekend. Does she know? No, she doesn't know what it's about, and um, yeah, it'll be, a, I would imagine, a shock to her, so we'll see how we go. What Margaret doesn't know, and what Mark can't reveal over the phone, is that the baby boy she gave away 25 years ago may now be dead. Hello, Margaret. Sergeant Mark Samways from the Police Missing Persons Unit. How are you? We've got a missing person we're making a few inquiries about, and yeah, your name just came up in the course of our inquiries, and I just need to speak to you about it. Yep, and where, do you know where we are, or...? Yep, and when you come in the door, just ask for me at security and they'll call me and I'll come down and meet you. Great, look forward to it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. How'd you go? Fine. She's coming on her own? I believe so. She's going to stay with a friend at Fairfield. She said, I say, you've got a missing persons case, have you, that you need my help on, or you need, you need to ask me about, and I've gone, yeah. After three years of searching, Wendy Bell and her daughter Caroline have flown to Brisbane to meet Michael. Gee, it's warm here, isn't it? I oh, know, it's warm here. They've decided to meet at Michael's favourite park near his care facilities. What are you going to say to him when you see him? Oh, good day, Mick. Where have you been up to, you little bugger? Where have you been all this time? Like you've turned up now, not 15 years later. <laughs> I'd disown him then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mick, where are you? I'd like to know which way you're going to come from. Is that him in a car? I don't know. The only friends that I thought he would have, they live in Camden. And you, you get the feeling they, they may know where he is. They, I think they do. I want to go out there myself and just keep, I don't know, just look out to see if I see him coming home or something, but no one lets me go in my condition. Pat McEwen decides to allow Susanna and her father Felix to show them where she suspects Martin is hiding. Uh, we'll follow you out to this address. And obviously, we don't know the correct address, otherwise, we'd, we'd go there but ourselves. But he has strict conditions. Um, when we get there, we don't want you anywhere near, near the residence. You'll just indicate to us where the residence is, yep. and you'll just drive on. We'll stop and go in there. Yeah, this, uh, this scenario is really, um, it's, it's not normal for police to do that. It's just that if we had an address, we'd go there with, uh, with our attending. Um, 
but given the fact that uh, she only knows how to actually drive from the place without physically giving an, an address, uh, this is the only way we're going to uh, locate the premises. On the way, they receive a phone call from headquarters. Yep. No worries. OK, so how long ago did that information come through? The news forces Constable okay, McEwen to change his so plans. Thank you for that. So today, what we need to do, we'll obviously introduce ourselves to Mum, explain the situation why we're there, why we're there, and um, then ask her for a DNA sample if you could organise that part for me. No problem. Hello, pleased to meet you. Thank you for coming in. Oh, Margaret Weeks has no idea why she's being called into police headquarters. What she's about to learn from Mark is traumatic and extremely personal. He doesn't want to deliver his news on the phone or at home amongst family who may not know about the baby she once had. You probably have no idea. No. Why, right. You're aware of where the missing persons unit, and we, yes, we look yes. at people who have gone missing. So I'll just confirm a few things. You're obviously Margaret Mary Weeks. Yes. And you were born in 1948. Yes. OK, no worries. You had a child in 1968. Yes. Gave yes. birth to a male child. Yes. Um, Dennis. Dennis. Yes. Right, that you gave up for adoption. Yes. All right. That's what that's what this is in relation to. All right, I can see a bit nervous. Would you like a cold drink, a bottle of water, a cup of tea? What would you like? Can I get you anything? Okay. Could you get a bottle of water, please? We'll just get you a drink of water. <laughs> no, you're right. I have as much time as you need, OK? <laughs> it's an uncomfortable moment for everyone. I just couldn't keep two babies. Yeah. Just, you know, I knew I couldn't give him what yeah. somebody else could we give him in. when I already yeah. had another baby. Why we are interested in, in that background is because Dennis was subsequently renamed Bill. Twelve years ago, that young man was reported missing as a missing person. Right. Now, subsequent investigations have indicated that he may have met with foul play. So he may be the victim of a murder. All right? Not confirmed. If down the track, a set of remains is found, so a body is found, or bones are found, or other, other forensic evidence is found. You need my DNA. I need a DNA sample, that's right. Yeah, no worry. Not a very easy task for me to ask of you, but that's why I needed to speak to you, and that probably also, you can understand why I didn't do it over the phone. Well, that's as we uh, we just received some information on the radio actually, or by mobile. He's been located. Oh, okay. Martin's been located. He's presented himself at Macquarie Fields Police Station. Oh, right. But he's okay. Yeah. Uh, so we'll just have to we'll go over there and just uh, see if he's still there. You know, the police can't really hold him because he hasn't committed yeah. an offence. But we've suggested they you know that he stay there until we come over and just find out what's going what's you going on. Some more information. If uh, he's prepared to talk to you. Yeah. For sure. Okay. Yeah. I'm just numb, really. I always thought about him. Just get you to pull that out. What can you say? This is so hard. Just, yeah, both sides all around. Inside of your mouth. I always wonder why he never tried to contact me, and I used to think, oh, have I got any more grandchildren? And you don't forget when you have a child. Nobody forgets. You can't ever forget that. No mother can. The boys are going to want to know today what this is all about, you know. So now I've got to tell them. time Susanna arrives at Macquarie Fields Police Station, her husband is gone again. She's now desperate for answers. 
this detective who saw Martin works undercover and can't be identified. I had um, Mr. Ross come over to the station before. Apparently he said that he was reported as missing and um, he knew about that thing and um, he just wanted to present himself to say that he wasn't missing. So. Did he come and, in with anyone? Uh, he, a bit later, yes, a friend come in. But what, do you know what she looks like? Is it a girl? No, it's a male. It's a male? Yes. An older man? Yes. So he's got glasses? No. He's been staying with this guy and they've organised for his welfare and stuff, so... So how did he know he was reported missing? I don't know. He just said, I know that my wife's... Uh, I, I think I'm, I've been reported as missing. That's what he said. OK? Sorry, thank you. No worries. You're welcome. I just don't think that, that that's true. Right. <laughs> so I think that he's with that family. I still think that. Well, fortunately, you know, for yourself, he's... He's now a located person. Yeah, and you can't find him anymore, obviously. Yeah. OK. Thank you, anyway. <laughs> At this point, we've got to say that, um, you know, he's been located and we can't take it any further. We feel for her because she wants to, to do, actually speak to him, but at this point, um, it may not happen. Yeah, this is him. Hey, Mickey! <laughs> Can where you be, Mick? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're not in boy, you're in boy. Oh, nice. How you going? Good. Good to see you, Jeff. Good to see you too. Yeah. Come and sit out with us. Yeah, I'm all right, yeah. Oh, good. You're good, you're mate. Hey, Mick. We found you anyway now. You've got. Yeah. Oh, you're less than healthy. How did you get up here? A On a plane. Did you? Well, you're looking well. I'm looking well, yeah. Okay, open your presents so open. you can see what I've got in you. Okay. Check it out. Yep. I just ripped that. I'll, off. Gonna, I'll, I'll break it all. Yeah, that's it. Have you missed us? I missed you, yeah. You haven't, you haven't seen my kids for a long time. No, I haven't. I. You remember their names? Yeah, I remember their names. Yeah. What's their names? I can't remember. <laughs> you you can't that. remember. See that? Yep. It's a picture of me and a picture of Mum. Well, I did. They don't forget us. No. Nah. And here, look on the back. Oh, yeah. Your phone number, yeah? Mum's phone number. Is phone number. My oh, phone number. Yeah. So you don't get, you don't lose us. Mum, get a kiss? Thanks, so. <laughs> Good on you. Love you, Vicky. Yeah. Family too. And forget that. So we got a card, Pat. Five weeks later, and still no happy ending for Susanna and husband Martin. Oh. But a beautiful new beginning. Fowler Eleanor Lorden was born on the 18th of December 2005. I thought you might like to see a photo of my beautiful daughter. Thanks once again. That's nice, mate. Great. Pretty sad for a losing husband, but that's yeah. a that's a happy. Happy ending, is it? Lovely photo. Good work. Another frantic well, day at the missing persons unit, and, with yeah, today's yeah, workload yeah. a mix of old um, and new okay. cases. Diana, I believe. Constable um, Diana Cassie is following up reported few, sightings of Tarle Pless, a young woman last seen in 1996. All right. Sergeant Samways, you've got an update on uh, Mr Roach case. Uh, for Sergeant yeah, Mark yeah, yeah. Samways and the ongoing search for Bill Roach, Margaret. missing for 12 years, it's a case of one step forward and two steps back. It's an amazing story. It is and one, Senior so Constable Gary Bailey is in charge of one of the more uh, disturbing see, new so cases the... that came in overnight, As involving the possible like, abduction uh, of a 16-year-old girl. They found, and, uh, they found a wallet at Campbelltown. OK. Thank you, too. Missing teenager Amanda Pillay uh, left home 24 hours ago and hasn't been it? seen since. Yeah, it's Gary Bailey from the Missing Persons Unit. How are you going? It's not home. What's that? It's not home. What about the wallet last night? The police found it. They found the wallet? Yes. Yeah. They've still got it at the police station, and They wouldn't let me look at it. So out of character for her. She always rings me. To Constable Bailey, the discovery of Amanda's wallet found in the alley only spells trouble. To find this wallet is, is very disturbing. Whether she's just lost it or someone, uh, not something more sinister, we're not real sure at this stage. 
At the missing persons unit, Sergeant Mark Samways makes final preparations in the next phase of his search for long-term missing person, Bill Roach. Last week, Mark tracked down Margaret Weeks, Bill Roach's biological mum, who adopted Bill out when he was a newborn baby. Um, you had a child in 1968. She was devastated to learn the child she gave up 36 years ago may now be dead. The New South Wales police are taking it very seriously. Today, Mark, Margaret and her son Jason are travelling to Coffs Harbour to meet Bill's adoptive mum, Yvonne, for the first time. A little bit nervous. I always knew that he would go to good people. I actually, I really want to meet Yvonne. I'm very excited about that, actually. I really want to thank her for all she's done for, for him, you know. But I had to be prepared also because I had to tell my other boys about it too, which they never knew about it. But they know now I'm being very supportive, especially Jason. It's a nervous and exciting time for all. Until two weeks ago, Jason never knew he had a baby brother. I never expected to have another brother out there. <laughs> All I wanted to do was find out more about him, what he was like and what sort of man he was. Yeah. Searching for any clues that may shed light on Amanda's disappearance, Gary visits the family home in Ambervale to talk with her distraught mum, Putty. So this is a, is this a picture of Amanda? Yes, mm -hmm. that's a nice That's the most one. recent one? Yes. I just know her to be a good kid, listens, mm. stays home, likes to go out, mm. but um, always with a friend, never goes on her own, never, or with her brothers. It's now been 26 long hours, and neither Amanda nor the friend she was out with have made any contact. Yeah, look, master, she mastered the Bible. It's completely out of character for this straight A student. So, understandably, there are grave concerns for her safety. Well, her curfew is 10 o'clock. She has to be in the house by 10 o'clock. Those are the standard rules. And there's never been any problems with that before? No, I, um, she's just turned 16 and I've just let her go out mm -hmm. with these friends. That's the first time she's ever gone there to the city. And then come last night, you expect her home at 10. What, what time? Then, and then I believe the police... They rang me. They were in con What time was that? About eight-ish. About eight, yeah. And what did they have to say then? That they found her wallet in Campbelltown Tunnel by the... Near the railway there, is railway it? Railway station. The first thing Gary needs to establish is where Amanda was she last seen. Someone stole them and I just can't buy any more. Twelve years after Bill's disappearance from Armadale, his two mothers are preparing to meet for the first time. And there's a lot riding on this meeting for both women. If Margaret's DNA matches the blood found in Bill's last home, then the mystery of his disappearance may be solved. Certainly no, no idea that anything can twist as far as this is twisted. And so it's like coming full circle. I know what I'm feeling, so I can't imagine what she's feeling. It'd be even ten times as worse, because she's been his mother since he's been six weeks old. Get the nerves at first. But it's also a chance for Margaret to learn more about her baby boys. I think this is going to be a wonderful day for you. Yes, I think it is too. And, yeah. and I hope it is for Yvonne and, and uh, yeah. For Yvonne, this meeting is a dream come true. It's Amanda's mum here. But back in Ambervale, Putty is living a nightmare. And was she worried or concerned or anything yesterday? Gary and Putty have found Amanda's diary and begin to call her friends one by one. She didn't say who she was with at all. Um, Ofa said she was on her own. Amanda wasn't where her mother thought she was oh, yesterday. No. Instead, she was in a pool yeah. hall in Liverpool. I think Amanda has been... I don't want to think like that. Amanda, or your friends, if you know where she is, ring me and let me know that you know. Just let me know she's all right. Hi. Margaret, this is Yvonne. 
Finally, after weeks of waiting, Bill's two mums come face to face for the first time. Oh, darling, it's so hard for you. And you too. I know, but you, you brought him up. <laughs> oh, how you up in the middle of me, son? I knew he'd go to somebody wonderful. God bless you. And you do. But I have so much to ask you, and I hope yeah, you don't mind. Good. And I ask you too. Yeah? Uh, I've got all there ready. You know. You need to know, and I need to know. Yeah, so. yeah definitely. It's a tunnel where her wallet was found last night about 8 o'clock. 28 hours after Amanda disappeared, a lucky break for Gary. Where does it lead to? He uncovers surveillance footage from where Amanda's wallet was found. The mall over there. So the wallet was found about 8 o'clock in the tunnel. So if we could start from, say, 8 o'clock and work back. This is sort of facing from the railway, this, this footage, isn't it? What's this bloke up to? And I think there's some something thrown on the ground. Yeah, he's thrown it out. What time is that? And caught on tape, red-handed, this man okay. rifling through Amanda's wallet. Sort of turns bad, you know. Well, firstly, I'd like to give you this. Just made in a hurry. With the help of Yvonne's priceless photos, Margaret and Jason get to see what Bill looks like at last. He was beautiful, wasn't he? <laughs> I did see him. Yvonne. Did you? Yes, yeah. I did. I wasn't going without seeing him. No. You know, I didn't want to let him go. No. For Mark Samways, there's still much to do. His next step is to take the DNA sample found in Bill's cottage to the US for testing and see if it's a match with Margaret's. But for today, there are no policing duties no more bad news to deliver. The reason that we're here today is, is because basically we've broken bad news to, to both these ladies. Um, but I don't know where the investigation will head, where this case will, where it will go down the track. But uh, one good thing is that these two ladies, the natural mum and the adopted mum, have finally met. And if nothing else comes from it, it's very rewarding. His second bath was in a, a wash basin at the motel in Musselbrook. <laughs> <laughs> and his father sitting on the toilet seat in a towel and me with this slippy little... <laughs> not knowing how to... Have you seen this girl around at all? There's still been no word from Amanda. So the missing persons unit is now focusing on the pool hall where she was last seen. As soon as I found out she had no wallet, I, I started crying I was a wreck. Do you know that girl? No? Yeah, I'm asking if he was last night. Would he? But no wallet. It's... yes. That was the horror thing when the police rang. Have you ever seen that girl? I never saw that girl. Huh? I miss her very much. And I'm scared for her. We're all scared for her. Today at the Missing Persons Unit, there's been a breakthrough in one of their long-term cases. Following the nationwide publication of this photo, police have received a number of credible sightings on 39-year-old Tale Pless, who's been missing nearly a decade. He actually saw Tale Pless being escorted by two police officers out of St Mary's Cathedral. Constable Diana Cassey is in charge of investigating every reported sighting and, with the help of Darren Connabeer, is also searching a national database for any other leads. Meanwhile, back at Ambervale, Amanda's mother, Putty, is worried sick after her second sleepless Could night with no news of her daughter. Excellent test results, 100%. Oh, she got so much good things that she's done. Amanda has never been in any kind of trouble before, so her disappearance is a complete mystery. I think someone has made my daughter trust them. If someone's going to offer to help her, take advantage of her. That's what I'm scared of. Sure, Mark. X marks the spot. 
Diana Kazzi and Darren Connabeer are investigating the possible computer matches for Tarlay Pless. What we're doing now at the moment is eliminating anyone that definitely doesn't look anywhere near what our missing person looks like. No. Case by case, they hone in on the images looking for any details to match against their photo. Even though the date of birth is wrong, that's what we'll Sergeant give, we'll and give I her a, a tip. So, armed with seven possible matches, the footwork begins on tracking down Tarlay. What year did she go missing? 1996. Oh, so you've got to give and take age. And... Yeah. Is she a working girl? No, I'm not going to believe so. Some of the strongest reports place Tarlay in the inner city. Hopefully, we'll find Tarlay. And Diana Kazzi yes. decides to focus the search there. Treading the same path as police, Richard Pless, Tarlay's brother, continues his own search for his missing sister. Tale was leading an active, normal lifestyle. Very pretty girl, very tall, um, hazel eyes. I, I saw Natalie and Bruglia on TV the other day, and they looked almost identical. Um, that's what Tale looks like. She's an attractive girl. See that lady over there? Looks just like Tale. Very similar. The gait is very similar. The hair is very similar. We just want to know that she's safe, she's sound. Every time I come up and visit Mum, um, we always talk about Tarlay, and you can just see that she's going to start crying again. Because you, you don't lose a child and laugh and smile all the time, you just can't. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, put here, it's Gary Bailey from The Missing Persons. How are you going? You haven't heard anything, no doubt? No. Um, we've had a bit of a look around, but still no luck there either. We've had a bit of a look around. We went to the railways. We had a look at the CT footage there. Shows on the, on the film that uh, a bloke walked in the tunnel, goes through the wallet, and there's a bunch of papers on the ground, and obviously take something out of it. You can't see what it is. Probably money, I suppose. And away he goes. You can give me a ring then. And give me a ring on that mobile if you want to. OK. All right, then. Thank I'll talk you. to you later on. Bye. Bye-bye. Nothing. It's late Friday afternoon, and Amanda has been missing now for three days. Then, out of the blue, Gary Bailey receives a call from Amanda's mum. Amanda has just returned home, but with some horrific news. And the kid's only 15, she got raped. What's that again? Come again? She got Who was that? Her friend. Did they go to the police? No, the girl was frightened, didn't know what to do. We'll have a chat to you and see if we can get some details. We can't leave her there like that. Thank, thank you, buddy. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Meanwhile, in a small seaside chapel in Coffs Harbour, Yvonne and Margaret light memorial candles for Bill. Thanks, Yvonne. With these candles, I'd like to like, unite the two families and, and maybe keep these as a remembrance of, of our, um, our, our Bill. And I'd like to thank you, Margaret, for for enabling me to have 25 wonderful years with such a wonderful book that I could never have done without your help. With that, I'd just like to say, Bill, wherever you are, we are always thinking of you. Thank you for taking him into your home as your son. I've never forgotten him. He's always in my heart. And wherever he is, I hope he's all right. We'll do the rest of this together between the two families. OK. And we'll follow it through. Definitely. Whatever Definitely. way it goes. Yep. And we hope we can get closure. Yep. Soon. Gary Bailey arrives at the Pillay home to question Amanda. Amanda. And to find out more about the...
allegations. You told your mother that apparently the, one of this friend was at the bus stop. Apparently she reckoned she'd been raped or something. At the station. Mm. Is that true or not? Far as what she told me, yes. Yeah, what was her name? Amanda refuses to give no, any details right. about the That's friend she says she was consoling for three days. <sighs> but for police, the allegations of are far too okay. serious to ignore. Bye bye. It's now a matter that warrants further investigation. I'm going to make some more inquiries today, and uh, if there's anything in the story at all, I will uh, refer it on to the local police and they can come out and investigate it. I'd just like to say to the people of Armadale that uh, where we lived and where Bill grew up with Kim, his sister, and uh, I'd just like you to think back to 1993. Um, if there's the slightest little bit of information that you may have that may seem unimportant to you, it may be just the part of the jigsaw that we need to find out what Bill's last uh, steps were in Armadale, maybe the clue of his disappearance. If you could just tell the police, it's 12 years now and we need closure. Let's just identify that In the Tarlay Pless case, the police are eliminating new leads one by one. You don't know where she's gone, though? It all depends what story you heard. Yeah. Uh, she just up and left. OK, all right. Well, what I heard that she went to Victoria. Uh, probably another line of inquiry to do, obviously, run her name in again and see if we can come up with another address. Forehead, the nose is in the, the round line. Forehead. As Diana Cassie continues to match the fresh sightings against the thousands of faces in the police database. Across town, in a park Tale used to love, the pressure finally catches up with her brother, Richard. It's just heartbreaking not knowing that Tale's OK. Just make a phone call, please. God, I'll pay for your phone call if you want to send it. 100 reverse, whatever, I don't care. 